What's going on YouTube? Brad Dave's here, back for another review, and this one is on the Segeli 75W TC and the Segeli 150W TC. And as you guess, these are both temperature control box mods. One goes to 75 watts, one goes to 150 watts. One goes down to 0 0.1 ohms, one goes down to 0 0.05 ohms. So the single 18651 goes lower in resistances to the dual 18650. Who, who knows why they've done that? Who knows? Um, this is going to be a lengthy review. You've probably already you know, figured that out by the, the time signature at the bottom. So uh, I already apologise about that. Um, I will have annotations on screen to where you can just skip to watch the sections of whichever one you're interested in. But if you know you just want to watch the full thing, thank you. I mean, I appreciate it. Um, we'll talk about a lot after the close-ups. Um, there's a lot of uh, things I want to mention, but uh, we'll just cut straight to it. And you know, we'll just uh, we'll give this a vape, and then we'll carry on with the uh, the close-ups. It's turned off. It would be you know pretty handy if I turned this back on. Okay, so here we have the Segeli 150 watt TC. And on the right here we have the Segeli 75 watt TC. And as you guessed, these are both temperature control box mods. Obviously one goes to 150 watts and one goes to 75 watts. But we're going to cover all the specs from both of them. A lot of them have similar specs, but obviously one of them's got a bit more power. One can handle, you know, lower resistances and all that sort of stuff. But, you know, we'll just go through the specs of each one. And then we'll go back to, you know, the face part of the video and we'll give them a vape. Okay, so as you already know, the bigger one is the more powerful one, which is the Segeli 150 watt TC. And this does go from 10 watts all the way to, as you guessed it, 150 watts. But that is in power mode. And power mode is for, you know, your regular cancel coils and all of your regular builds. And then obviously you've got temperature control mode, which is for all of your NI200 and titanium coils, which are temperature control coils. And in temperature control mode, obviously you can control your temperature, which is 100 all the way up to 300 degrees Celsius, or if you prefer using Fahrenheit, you can go from 212 all the way up to 572 degrees Fahrenheit. But rather than controlling the temperature and the watts with this particular box mod, you have to control it in temperature and in joules. But a lot of people like to just, you know, use the joules as if they were watts. A lot of people think it is just a J, which replaces the W on screen, and there is no difference. But Technically, joules are a big difference. Um, joules is all about, you know, power over time, whereas watts is like, you know, voltage and resistance times by each other or something like that. Um, can't remember that exactly off the top of my head. But yeah, basically the joules are a lot similar. Um, maybe 10 joules would be like 9 watts or something. It does feel a little bit weaker, but other than that, there's no real big difference. Um, and the output voltage, you can output as little as 1 volt, which uh, I don't think anyone will be doing all the way up to 7.5 volts so I mean you've almost got as much power as a series box mod but uh, not quite. Um, the atomizer resistance range uh, is the lowest ohms you can go to is 0 0.1 and that is in temperature mode and in power mode as far as I'm aware. Um, all the way up to 3 ohms and again I don't really think many people are going to be using resistances that high but you know the option is there. Uh, this does take two 18650s and we will show you, you know, the insides and how to get into the batteries um, in the next part of the video. Um, the max current is 35 amps. I mean, I do have two 30 amp batteries in here. So, I mean, the the realistic it is a, a parallel setup in there. So, I mean, if you're using a mechanical parallel box, the max amperage you could have is 60 amps. So, I mean, keeping that at 35 amps, it, it, I mean, they could have went a little bit higher. But, I mean, you do know it's going to be nice and safe. And the dimensions are 103 millimeters by 57 millimeters by 25 millimeters. It weighs as a product 210 grams, but then uh, Segeli specified that the total weight is 340 grams, which I mean, I know this is some boring information that no one really cares about, but I think it's 340 grams when it's got two batteries in there. Okay, and some more of the boring specs are, you know, it has got temperature control mode and wattage mode, as we've already spoken about. Um, but you have got low voltage protection, so when your batteries, you know, start to die, and if they're a little bit too, like, you know, it's got a battery indicator on the screen, and once they get to, you know, too low of a, you know, amount of voltage in there, it will automatically, you know, not allow you to fire the device just to ensure that you don't uh, over-discharge your batteries. Uh, you've also got low resistance protection, so if you build a build that's too low, then, you know, it will let you fire it. It's also got a high input voltage warning where it comes up with loads of H's on the screen. And I mean, the maximum battery input voltage you can have is 8.4, which is, you know, two fully charged 
brand new 18650s and as long as your batteries don't go below 6.4 volts you're going to be able to vape and vape and vape but once they do get to that point it will warn you that they're too low but yeah apparently if you put anything in that's above 8.4 volts of you know battery power then it will not allow you to uh, to fire this which is a good thing because I mean that's going to protect the, the innards of the mod. It also has output short circuit protection which uh, I'm guessing it's just in case the uh, it, you know, there's a short in your atomizer there, it won't allow you to fire it. I mean, that, that's what I'm guessing that is. I mean, I'm not completely clued up on all of the, you know, protection sides of things, but I do want to let you know about all of that sort of stuff. You do have reverse battery protection, so if you happen to be a numpty and put your batteries in the wrong way, you know you're going to be protected by that. It's also got overheat protection, where it does come up saying that your device is too hot on the screen. Um, yeah, and that's about it. And it does come with a silicon sleeve. You can buy a variety of colours online from you know other websites other than Segeli. I don't think they actually stock other ones apart from the white ones that come with the mods. And it comes in a black and in a red. And in my opinion, the red's far too bright. But you know, if you're into that, then you're into that. Um, but yeah, we'll have a look at the uh, the 75 watt now. We'll then go back to this one, look through the menu system. And then we'll go to the 75 watt and look through the menu system, show you how they differ. And then, you know, we'll go back to the face part of the video and we'll talk about the pros and cons. Okay, so this is the Segeli 75 watt temperature control box mod and we'll quickly bash through all of the specs just to get them out of the way so we can get the more fun stuff. Uh, this is able to fire from 5 watts to 75 watts and it can output voltages from 0.5 volts to 7.5 volts. Um, your battery has to be charged, uh, well, yeah, because it takes a single 18650 unlike the 150 watt which takes two. But your battery's got to be charged up to at least 3.2 volts for the box mod to work. And it's got to be charged at a maximum charge, it can be 4.2 volts. And they do recommend that you use an 18650 high drain battery. Um, as the maximum current is 25 amps that this device can put out. So they recommend that you have a battery that can put out at least 25 amps. And in temperature mode, you can do it from 100 to 350 degrees Celsius. And then in Fahrenheit mode, you can do it from 212 degrees Celsius, uh, degrees Fahrenheit to 662 degrees Fahrenheit. So if you prefer Celsius, you can use Celsius. And if you prefer Fahrenheit, you can use Fahrenheit. But this device, unlike the Segeli 150 watt, does not use joules. It uses watts. It is normal, unlike the uh, 150. So, uh, yeah, you know, if that joules thing puts you off, then maybe this one will be, you know, more to your tastes. Um... You can fire something on here in temperature mode as low as 0 0.05 ohms, which is 0.5 ohms lower, uh, 0 0.05 ohms lower, sorry, than the Segali 150 watt, which just baffles me because you would have thought with two 18650s you could fire lower coils, but apparently not. Um, but you can only fire up to a 2.5 ohm coil, um, and obviously that's 0.5 ohms less than the 150 but really no one's firing coils at that high resistance anymore. Um, and then apparently the product weight is 300 and, uh, sorry, 230 grams, but the total weight is 400 grams, so I think that includes the battery in there, or possibly you know, a standard weight of a atomizer. Um, it does have, as I said, temperature control and wattage mode, low voltage protection, so as I said, if your battery gets too low, it will not let you fire it. Um, it has a high input voltage warning, so if you know you put a battery in here which reads out more than 4.2 volts to save the device, it will not let you fire anything. Um, it has output short circuit protection, so I'm guessing if your atomizer shorts out, it won't fire. It'll be like, whoa, hold on, you know, low resistance, check atomizer. Um, it has reverse battery protection, so you know, if you, again, if you're an empty, you put your batteries in the wrong way, then luckily you are saved from... The catastrophe which could be a vent and battery which is a good thing and again this has overheating protection and you can see up here we'll have a look at the next part of the video a little bit more closer up I have got the black and the uh, chrome-esque doors and um, they claim to be chrome but I'm pretty sure it's just you know aluminium um, but you can get this in black and white on this section all across the middle and you can get oh what is it called nickel doors uh, pearl chrome doors, which these apparently are pearl chrome, or an antique, co uh, sorry, antique copper colour, um, which all come with the Segali logo, and again, you get this clear sleeve, um, and as far as I know, you can't get any other sleeves for this, but I'm sure that there will be some aftermarket sleeves. But yeah, now we'll look at the menu system of the Segali 150W TC, and then the menu system of the 75W TC, compare them, and then we'll try them out. Okay, so to turn the device on, you press the button five times.
And there you go, you can see the Sigeli logo, and I do apologise if it looks like it's rolling, but um, that is not a problem with the device, that's a problem with, you know, the shutter speed of my camera and the refresh rate of the screen causing a rolling effect. And I am going to turn the brightness up because it is very hard to capture these screens on camera. Um, so I do apologise if the screen is very, very white. And you can see in regular power mode, at the top left there, you've got your watts. And again, you can adjust that in 0.1 increments. But until a certain point, which I cannot quite find, because if you watch it automatically starts to roll. Um, it does start to go up in, like, 1 increments rather than 0.1 increments. Um... But yeah, it's just something to keep in mind if, you know, you like to really, really fine-tune your watts. And if you change your wattage, depending on what the resistance is down there, which again, the resistance is down in the bottom right corner, and it is a lovely two decimal place uh, resistance reading, unlike the original Segeli, uh 150 watt, which was just a one decimal place reading. Um, depending on what the resistance is and the wattage is, the voltage at the top right will change, and you can see a battery indicator on the left with an actual battery percentage to the right of that, just at the bottom left hand side. And if you press the fire button five times, you are able to go into the system, and if you continue to press the fire button, you can slide through the system. And yeah, so you can either turn the system on and off, so to turn it off, you press this five times, click the positive button, and it will turn your system off, and then obviously you turn it back on, press it five more times, and you will get back into the device. And we'll press that five more times, and then you'll see that if we cycle through here by pressing again the fire button, we can put it through power mode or dual mode and just for this uh, demonstration we'll go to dual mode now and then you can use the units of celsius or fahrenheit as mentioned before we'll choose celsius and we'll put it at 210 degrees but we're not going to be using this but i mean you can use this to scroll all the way to the max and the minimum uh you know temperature which is 300 all the way down to 100 but people do recommend if you're using cotton to only you know put it at a maximum of 210 degrees as that will stop your cotton from ever burning because cotton's burning temperature is 210 degrees as far as I know and then once you've selected your temperature you can exit the menu and then now we're in temperature mode and on the top left you'll see it does have the J there and you can you know go up and down in joules opposed to the regular watts which again I think that's really weird why did you go for that Sigeli? Odd choice um, and again that goes from 10 all the way to 100 joules and you'll see at the bottom left, it does say this is a 0.44 ohm coil. But if you press both the up and down buttons, it will, well it should, set your resistance. And if you are going to use temperature control, you have to set your resistance when your coil is nice and cool and at room temperature for the you know temperature control to work. But one thing I'm going to mention is I have not been able to get the temperature control on this to work with a dual coil. Um, single coil works fine, dual coil just burns every time. Um, I've got a big post about it on UK Vapor, so if you want to check that out, the link will be down below to that big discussion. I did a bit of testing, there's been a lot of discussion on it, if you want to get in on that discussion, yeah, the link will be down there. Please, you know, let us let us know all of your knowledge. Help us out as well as we are helping you. Um, but yeah, so that is the menu system for this one. Um, I'm going to put this back into power mode, as that's what I am using. And yeah, so let's put it on at 40 watts. That's 4.2 volts. And the battery is real time as soon as it goes down. You see there, it's on four, uh, 62, sorry, now it's on 60. Ah, oh, the battery's, ah, oh, yeah. See, it's jumping around. It's doing real time, you know, real time checking. So it does jump around a little bit, jumps up and down from time to time. But yeah, it's really good. It's a really nice bright screen. When you press the button, it does light up more. And yeah, it's a really enjoyable screen to use. So now we'll go and check out the 75 watt screen. Oh, yeah, and before I forget to mention, that has got a plastic sticker over the screen to keep it nice and safe, so that's why it does look a little bit, you know, a little bit scuffed, but uh, I can assure you it's perfectly fine. And the buttons themselves, again, it's just fingerprints. They're uh, absolutely fine. The condition of them is really good. And they can, uh, you know, they can put up to a little bit of the beating. Okay, so now we'll turn on the Segeli 75 Watt by doing the exact same thing, which is five clicks. Oh, and it's upside down. And you can see you're presented with the Segeli logo, but that one is a different one. It's not the round logo, which we're used to. It is a square, uh, sorry, well, yeah, so a square text logo. And um, we are not going to be able to vape this in the next section because I'm going to do it straight after um, as the battery is dying and, you know, it keeps doing that. Check battery, so if your battery voltage gets too low, it does work. It does tell you to check your battery. But yeah, so right now we are in temperature mode and as you can see, you can scroll up and down through the temperatures and it does round robin and it lets you flick over at Fahrenheit or Celsius depending on which one you're on when you do get to the maximum or minimum temperature you'll see here 
poof, it flicks over to the maximum. Um, but yeah, top left is the resistance, bottom left is the voltage which you're putting out, the far left is the battery indicator, and the bottom right is your watts. Good job, Sigeli, using watts on this one and joules on this uh, 150 watt. You know how to confuse people. And now if you press again, the up and down arrows, that didn't work. Oh yeah, sorry, um, if you hold the up and down arrows, um, well if you press them, it allows you to change the watts. And then if you press the fire button, it like you know selects the wattage, or you can just leave it for a couple of seconds. If you press them both again, it allows you to change your temperature. And then if you hold them both, it allows you to cycle between temperature and power. But then if we press, I think it's the fire button and the down button, It sets your resistance, but you do really have to press the down and then the fire in a sort of quick motion like that. And it measures your resistance, which you have to do at room temperature. Again, you have to do it at room temperature with a new coil. You have to set your resistance for the temperature control to work properly. And if you do the same with the up and the fire button, it does lock your system. And it takes ages for the system lock to go away. Oh, no, it doesn't. You can unlock it straight away. Right, now we'll go to power mode. And then, you know, to your standard, it just cycles in 0.1 increments, and then it doesn't speed up. I mean, it's pretty fast anyways, but uh, it just keeps going and going and going. And you see the top right, rather than having your temperature, it does just say power. Um, it doesn't give you, you know, the voltage is at the bottom left, you've got your resistance, you've got your watts, um, but you have no battery percentage anywhere. I do apologise about that, all the birds outside were going crazy. Um, but yeah, so that's the menu system on this one. It's pretty simple, pretty easy to use. And now there's a plane flying over. So we'll cut here and we'll go to the part of the video where we check out the aesthetics of the boxes. Okay, so now we're going to check the aesthetics of this box itself. I'll take off my sub tank, which is what I've been primarily using this with. Um, if that's the right word to use. Um, i trying to sound smart and I'll probably just use the wrong word. Um, but yeah, so it comes with a silicon sleeve. I will slide this off and I will mention that it is a nice tight sleeve. If anything, it's too tight because it's very hard to get off sometimes. Um, but yeah, this is the box itself. I will turn the brightness up because the box is quite a dark matte black um, So it might be a little bit hard to see the detail um, As I mentioned you got the up and down buttons on the front. These don't have plus and minus symbols on them They do just have arrows so left is down and right is up um, I don't think you can flip the screen as far as I'm aware. I have not been able to flip it so Apologies to you left-handed people because it is more of a right-handed screen um, You have the fire button. These are all made out of you know a shiny plastic. I think I don't think they're really metal they're they feel very, you know, sort of cheap. Um, they do rattle a little bit, not too much, not too much to bother me. But I mean, if you if you bother by that sort of thing, it might bother you. On this side here, it does say Segali 150 watt temperature control, which is exactly what it is. We do have the battery door here. We have venting out the bottom here, which is for you know your battery venting in case you are unfortunate enough to somehow have some sort of malfunction. And it is also sorry to uh, let in some cool air. And let out hot air. It hasn't got like a built-in fan or anything in there to like exhaust the air, but it does sort of just you know try to keep it cool. And you do have a nice shiny sort of metal plaque bit down here, which says Sigeli with a little bit of blue paint around it, which is nice. I mean, it's a nice, it's a nice little touch. Um, the overall shape of the box. I mean, it's really comfortable to hold. My fingers fit into that groove just nicely, just just nicely. And um, my thumb also rested in here. If I'm not firing it or if I'm just holding it, walking around, you know, it's just really comfy. Um, this bit up here, I don't know, it does, you know, bring down the size of the whole box quite a bit. Um, if it was up here, it would look a lot more chunky. So, I mean, good design feature, but it just it looks a little bit weird. Um, but yeah, so we'll take off the battery sled, which is as simple as, you know, sliding it off. And it does magnetise on there. Um, and it is a bit grippy, a bit clicky. Um, it's not going anywhere, you're not going to accidentally pull it off. Um, so that's good, but there is one thing I'm going to mention. Um, I'll try and zoom in for this part. Um, you'll see the door on this side, it dips in. On this side, it sticks out. The door's not flush. I've tried everything. I've tried taking out the batteries. I've tried, you know, oh, just everything. It won't, it physically would never, ever be flush. And that upsets me. Um, so if you're upset by stuff like that, don't get this. You'll be upset. Um, but we'll take the batteries out. And um, you'll see you've got the magnets here and here. You've got the positive and negative symbols down here for the orientation of which to put your batteries. Um, and yeah, I'm using two Torchy 
I think these are VCT4s rewrapped, so these are 30 amp batteries. So, you know, I've got the, the right batteries to use in here. I'd recommend using 30 amp batteries at minimum. Some people say that you can use Samsung 25Rs. I'd personally recommend 30 amp batteries, just be on the really, really safe side. And they do feel a little bit loose in there. Um, but when the, you know, the doors on there, they are secured in place. But it does feel a little bit, a little bit loose. But yeah, so we'll pull this out. Um, you are meant to use the ribbon, but that ribbon bit just fell out. So there's one that comes out and the other one should come out in the same way, but it has not because, you know, I'm a doofus. Um, yeah, you do have spring-loaded copper, you know, connectors up here. These ones down here are very flat. And you do have, you know, I think that's the capacitor down there, which is on show, which kind of freaks me out. But I mean, you know, whatever. It, it, it is what it is. Um, quality control pass stickers here, QC stickers, um, in my last video on the Sigeli 150 watt. For some reason, I thought that was some, you know, secret battery sled organisation. Um, so, if you've seen that, I do apologise for my dumbness. Um, the batteries also seem to have some serial code on them. I'm unsure how, you know, uh, important that is for you to, you know, be able to see, but it's there. Um, and yeah, the batteries are really easy to get in, so I personally put this battery in first. And when I put it in, obviously, positive side down. So what I do is I sort of try and put it in as flat as possible. So then you can just push it in place, otherwise I'm scared in case this bottom lip on the copper contact will, you know, rip my uh, my battery wrap. But I mean, I doubt that would ever happen. And then you put the bottom one in, which is negative side down. And then again, try and put it in as flat as possible. And then there you go, the ribbon's there, so you can pull them out easily. You can slide on your door. And then you are ready to, you know, turn your device on. Oh, yeah, that's one more thing. The door needs to line up on the you know the flat side it needs to be sort of flush with the whole device but sometimes it does line up on the inside here and if it does line up there it's not going to go in you might even damage your box so just be careful with that and you will notice that some paint is starting to wear off on the door itself and on the device down there but that is always hidden by the door but if that's something that bothers you then you know it'll bother you and you'll see there or will you see there well if I zoom right in that bit of ribbon always sticks out there. It always catches there. So you know you have to try and tuck it away. Sometimes it makes its way out and it really bothers me, but I mean, it doesn't really bother me, sorry, but you know, it might bother you. That's just something something to keep in mind. And yeah, now we'll go on to the aesthetics. Oh, 510 pin, I almost forgot that one. It is spring-loaded, it is copper, nice and you know, strong contacts. And it is, you know, it has got the stainless steel disc here, which if you remember my last review on the Sigeli 150 watt, I actually asked for one of these um, just to stop the actual body of the device getting scratched and it's been done and it's beautiful. And the finish, it's sort of a matte, it could even be like a, you know, a, like a spray coat. Um, it will scuff over time, which is why I'm keeping the silicon case on, you know, as religiously as possible. Um, it will scuff and it will scratch and it is, you know, if you've got sweat, well, mm, can you see that? It is already scratching very very faint sort of matte scuffs um yeah uh, it is a fingerprint magnet if i lick my thumb a tiny bit put it on there you see it no you can't really see but any bit of moisture does just grip to that but uh yeah we'll go to the 75 watt now and um, again i do apologize that this video is going to be super long and again the Sigeli 75 watt sorry and um, let me just turn that brightness down um the 75 watt uh where is the button i can't do it with my other hand the 75 watt does again come with a silicon sleeve and I'm going to pull that off again very tight. Um, but yeah, here's the 75 watt. Let's zoom this in, get a closer look. Um, and I will take this stripper off. I'm using a little little Derringer on here, which has got a little temperature control build, which we'll have a look at as well. Um, but yeah, it's got little, again, fake metal buttons, they're plastic. Um, the buttons are nice and clicky as they are on the Sigeli. Let's click on the 150 watt more clicky on this one, um, which I like, I like clicky buttons. Again, as I mentioned, you've got these coloured sides and you can get more of a, you know, uh, a pearlescent door, it's more pearly, um, and you can get a rustic copper looking door. And these doors do come off like so, and once you take both doors off, the device will be noticeably slimmer, but that is how you get your batteries out. And for this device, you do just need a 25 amp battery, which is why I'm using a Samsung 25R, which is, a, I think it's a 25 amp battery. 
correct me if I'm wrong, it might be 20, but I have been told that this is more than safe to use in here. Um, and again, to you get your battery in, I'd recommend trying pushing it in in the flattest way possible, but it is a lot easier to put the battery in when you've got one of them side panels on because you're not going to push it straight out the other side. And it would help if you put the side panel on the right side. Each side panel does have indentations and little nipples on them so that it ensures you put it on the right side because if you put it on the wrong side, these air vent holes for the battery, in case you are unfortunate enough to have a battery vent, would be, you know, over this black plastic section rather than being over the battery. So it would, you know, it wouldn't serve its purpose. So again, then batteries, they're really good. There's no play in the doors at all. And you know, they're not, you can hold it onto the door, you can shake it. It's not coming off. Well, it did just come off, but they are pretty secure nonetheless. Um, again, I've taken the sticker off this screen, so it is a lot shinier and it is lovely. And you should see me, hello. There's me, how you doing? Um, yeah, and then you've got that little logo down there. You've got some battery venting. You have got a micro USB charging port, which I'm not comfortable using onboard charging for my devices. I prefer just charging my, you know, batteries, which can be charged separately, separately. I mean, if you can take the battery out, there's no need to use that charging port, in my opinion. We do have a slight metal disc around the 510 here. And again, you have an adjustable copper pin. Um, the 510 is fine, it's connected nice and strongly and not a problem with that connection at all on any device that I've used. Um, this little disc around here though, if I put on this tripper again, you'll see it'll thread on really easily and really smoothly. Oh well, I'm actually having trouble right now. Why isn't it catching? Wow. Can you see this not happening? Oh there we go, that was probably my fault. But if you watch, it never makes a flush there, look, that's all the way down. And there is a gap because of that little silver or stainless steel 510 protruding bit. Um, and that, that bothers me a bit, but I mean, you know, just a minor nick. The rest of the device itself is really nice. But I have found myself using the 75 watt, uh, the 150 watt TC the most because, you know, dual 18650 over single 18650, in my opinion, um, just more battery life, more convenient for me. And it's just it's less hassle. Um, but that's just my opinion. Uh, yeah, that's everything I think I've got to mention. Um, if I've missed anything out, do ask me in the questions below. And now we'll go to the next part of the video. Okay, so that was the Segeli 150 watt box mod and the Segeli 75 watt box mod. Um, the only thing that I find bizarre about these, I mentioned in the close-ups, this is two 18650s, this is one 18650. This can fire down at 0.05 ohm in temperature mode. This can only fire down at 0.1, which is odd. You can fire down at least, well, you can fire down 0.05 ohms lower on the single 18650, which, you know, bizarre to me. This one in temperature mode, you can obviously do Fahrenheit or Celsius, and you can, you know, adjust the power in watts so it heats up quicker, which is, you set your temperature basically. Uh, people say that the most temperature you can use is 210 degrees Celsius. I'm not sure what that is in Fahrenheit. Um, so if you set it at 210 degrees Celsius, Put your water just high as you want, just to make it heat up as quick as you like, and it shouldn't burn. Um, but in this, it has joules and temperature, so you have it in, you know, you set your Celsius or your Fahrenheit, so 210 degrees Celsius, but you don't set the watts, you set joules, which is odd. It's just bizarre. I mean, I don't know why I don't like that, but they have. Um, and I'm going to mention, um, in power mode, I'm going to show you this Segeli 150 watt TC works lovely. I mean, I'm going to set it now to about 46 watts, um, which is 4 volts on this 0 0.45 ohm Kanga sub-tank. Um, sorry about this, it just, it's scrolling very quickly. You know what, whatever, 39 watts, 4.1 volts. Let's give it a vape. This is some 80 VG juice. Obviously, the vape production and all that sort of stuff is going to depend on your atomizer, your build, you know, your juice, all that sort of stuff. So we'll give it a vape, and then we'll talk about it a bit more. I have really, really been getting on with this sub-tank. I absolutely love it. People say, you know, oh, get the Goblin Mini. It's so much better. Oh, get the Zephyrus. It's so good. But uh, at the moment, don't feel like I need to. This sub-tank with, you know, the RBA deck has been an absolute delight. Um, yeah, it vapes lovely. It's powerful. It's giving you the power that you're asking it for. Obviously, within reason, if you're building super high ohms and you want, like, 75 watts or 100 watts, you're not going to be able to get it because it has got a maximum output of 7.5 volts. 
So, you know, you've got to be realistic, but at 0 0.44 ohms at 39 watts, I am getting 4.1 volts, and it's perfect, it's really nice. Um, but, right, temperature control mode. I've never, ever, ever been able to get temperature control mode to work in dual coil. In single coil, I can get it to work just fine. Um, we've got the Derringer here, by the way, or the Derringer, whatever you want to call it. Um, I'm going to do the five clicks, put this in temperature mode. Uh, the temperature is 210 degrees Celsius, and we've got it at 50 joules, um, so around you know 40 or 50 watts. Uh, we'll give it a vape, and then we'll talk about the temperature mode a bit more. Uh, the temperature mode of the two a bit more. You can see the vapor is a bit more wispy. Um, obviously, I could turn the temperature up more or the joules up more, but I can't because dual coil. I mean, down below I'll have a link to an experiment or an experiment that I did. Um, on the UK Vapors forum, trying to get dual temperature coils to work. Um, all the you know all the factors were perfect. The resistance of the coils were perfect. They were both they looked identical. They were identical, you know. But I just can't get dual temperature coils to work. I can get a single temperature coil to work. I can put the cotton in, dry fire it. The cotton doesn't burn. But in dual temperature mode, dual, dual coil temperature mode, it just doesn't work on either of these devices, in my opinion. Um, I might be doing something seriously wrong, but I've researched into it. A couple of other people have had a similar problem. And I think this little, ah, the Segelli sticker, the Segelli logo, the little logo on the side, it has a little sticker over it, which I'm going to take off now. Much nicer. Um, it, it doesn't work, but on the X-Cube 2, which, you know, it's that one with the little panel on the side, which you press, you can, you know, mess around with it on your phone. There's an app for it. It's really weird. I might get it at some point and review it. Um, that you do, you know, you, you select what kind of wire you're using, if it's nickel, uh, NI200, sorry, or if it's titanium, you select if you're using a single or a dual coil, and apparently that makes it work perfectly, but I have seen other people having, you know, some bother with it and not getting it to work. Um, so I don't know, I think temperature control it is in the work still. People are still trying to figure it out. So if you are going to get these, be ready to, you know, really fiddle around with it and try and get it to work. But single coil temperature mode works fine. It's a lovely vape. Dual coil, it's an okay vape, um, but it, it doesn't work. It, it burns, it still burns your cotton, and for me anyways, and I can't get it to work. But I mean, you know, I just might be shit at doing temperature coils. But yeah, we'll give it another vape and then we'll talk about them a bit more again. Okay, and I'm gonna put this back into power mode. And I'm going to try it with an Aspire Nautilus. And in this Nautilus, I have got some snake oil. And I'm going to be using this snake oil for a review. Um, Simon, I think his name is. I might be wrong. I do apologise if I'm wrong. Um, Simon over at T-Max Juice sent me over some snake oil. And I'm going to give it a, you know, a, a good whack. I'm going to try it a lot before I review it. He recommended that I, you know, vape it for a bit, leave it for a week, vape it for a bit, leave it for another week and see how the flavours develop, which is what I'm going to do. I'm going to do exactly what he asks because he says there is a noticeable difference. But yeah, so Spinal Nautilus Mini, 10 watts, 4.4 volts. Right, let's give it a try. Not exactly chucking the clouds, but what do you expect from a Nautilus Mini? But it works and it's lovely. It's a lovely vape. I have not been able to complain about this Nautilus. I have actually been using it. And I stick 20 watt, even though I've got these ridiculously high resistance, hello, these high, you know, power devices. Um, it just works. I mean, the device works with everything I've put on it. You know, it's lovely for tanks. It's lovely for sub tanks. It's lovely for drippers. It's lovely for temperature control in single coil, but dual coil, not so lovely. Um, the 75 watt, obviously I can't vape because my battery died. Um, it works exactly the same. I mean, on this uh, Segelli 150 watt, I never go under, uh, over, sorry, 75 watts. Uh, I've been over 75 watts once, and you know, it was a nice vape, it was very warm. Um, obviously it was with a very low resistance build, but honestly, the only reason I prefer the 150 watt is for the dual 18650 and the battery life. If, you know, you could get a 5000 milliamp hour battery 18650, you know, with a high amp limit, I would, go, I would happily just buy this one and use this one 24-7, but I prefer the battery life. 
of the 150. The, you know, I prefer the overall aesthetic of this one as well. I prefer the whole matte black look to it. Um, I do like the panelling on this one. I like how you get it in black and white and you can change the panels on them. Um, hello. I do apologise, my cat has been very needy, again, in every video now. Um, so I do prefer the 150 watt because of, you know, the battery life. You do have, you know, more wiggle room to, you know, build your stupid coils, your super, super low resistance coils, and, you know, put loads of power through them. Um, but as I said, I don't, I personally don't need that amount of power, but I do prefer the battery life compared to the 75 watt. Um, so for me, I do just prefer the 75 watt, uh, the 150 watt. But the 75 watt, you know, if, if you do prefer a smaller mod, it is going to be for you. Um, I definitely recommend trying these out. I mean, Segeli is up in their game, even though I personally think temperature control mode is a little bit of, you know, not, it's not a novelty, it's just a bit of a, a farce. It never really works uh, for me, in my experience, in dual coil. In single coil, that's a different story. It works and it's lovely. But, you know, each to their own. If you could get it to work, then fantastic. Let us know down below. Tell us what I am doing wrong. But do check out the UK Vapors post that I put down below because that will have all the specs in there. But I'm going to end this review now because I've run out of things to say. I'm kind of just blabbering on now. But thank you for watching. Don't forget to leave a like if you liked the video. Dislike if you disliked it. Leave a comment if you've got anything to ask, anything to add or anything to say. And yeah, subscribe if you haven't already because, you know, we've almost hit that, I think it's 700 subscribers that we're almost at. Um, and we are doing another giveaway very soon. Um, but yeah, thank you for watching. I will see you guys later. Let's have one more vape and then we'll end the video.